Hello, everybody. Welcome to the wonderful white world of SourceFed. Okay, probably should have thought that one out. When it comes to prolonging your existence and extending your brief time of being, people need to take a plethora of factors into consideration. You exercise. Watch what you eat. Avoid fist fighting bears. Don't play the game run into pointy swords. Avoid Mexico. And fire. And Chris Brown. <laughs> Joke's never gonna die. No. Unless you're hanging around Chris Brown. Yeah. And you're saying that joke, because he'll probably kill you. But one thing that people probably don't take into consideration is where they live. Because that will determine how much air pollution you're taking into your delicate, delicate body. Mm. Mm hmm Delicate. Be delicate. careful with me. I'm delicate. Oh, this guy. Which, according to a study conducted by Earth scientist Jason West that NASA's Earth Observatory posted, it's responsible for 2.1 million deaths worldwide every year. That's like the city of Houston kicking the bucket every year. Depending on where you live, every breath you take in is like taking in a, a bunch of microscopic UFC fighters that armbar and hammer fist your insides. But it isn't the air that's making you tap out prematurely. It's what's in the air. And the culprits are toxic pollution known as fine particle matter. So anyways, these smart people created this map that highlights the number of deaths per 1,000 square kilometers or 386 square miles. Dark brown means really bad, like lots of people dying, and lighter brown means not as really bad, but still really bad because lots of people are still dying. And the results are based off of how many human deaths due to pollutants have changed between 1850 and 2000. And I know what you're thinking. I don't want to die. Tell me where I shouldn't live, you white walled talking weirdos. Well, get off my back and I'll tell you, okay? It's pretty much everywhere you would expect. The east is atrociously bad for your longevity with India and China being the worst of the worst. And surprisingly, except for the Scandinavian countries, Europe is essentially brown across the board. And while the United States has its pockets of toilet air here and there, it isn't as widespread as I expected. So breathe in that crisp, rocky mountain air, my friends. And look at Australia. That with just a smattering of brown on the eastern coast, it's pretty much devoid of evil air particles. Which, it's important to note, can greatly fluctuate due to pollution inciting events like massive wildfires. Another interesting point of note on this map is the blue areas. These are areas where the rate of death due to air pollution has actually dropped since 1850. There's not a lot, but it's there. We call that hope. Blue is the color of hope. So if you want to increase your chances of becoming a decrepit 100-year-old feeble flesh pile, live in Australia. Cool. Northern Africa. Nope. Patagonia. Yeah. Alaska. Sure. Northern Canada. Love it. Greenland. Why not? Siberia. Not gonna happen. Antarctica. Better than Siberia. And Saudi Arabia. Fun time. So, despite all this stuff we're talking about, where do you guys want to live? What's your dream destination for life? Tell us where and why down below between your coughing fits. <laughs> And of course, click that like and subscribe button if you haven't. Click the sanitation or head on over to sourcebed.com. I'm Lee Newton. I'm Joe Beretta. France. Really? Is that what No, I've to? never been, so I always want to say there? France. Just want to just. But I probably want to live on like an Irish moor and just go. Yeah. I don't. I want to live don't... in a Fjord in New Zealand. Oh, solid Fjord. <laughs>